G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is a Juggernaut's The Fixer with 25% faster fire rate, 1 agility, and 1 broken English. Big news here at Captain Noob today. I'm going to restart recording my Weapon Spotlight videos in the PTS because at the moment, we've got the Custom Worlds active, which means I can turn the crafting um, cost down to nothing, which means I can basically reroll whatever weapon that I have as many times as I want. So what does that mean for you? That means that basically within reason, you can request for me to do a weapon and I, I can do it now. I can do it. Fallout 76 being the sandbox game that it is now is actually a true sandbox and I can keep crafting legendaries on the fixes to get exactly what I want. Now there's a little bit of a caveat. Um, I'm going to have to ask you to try to keep it to two legendary effects and the third one being optional because, you know, the chances that I get the perfect roll, it's... It's pretty low. If you think about how many primary, secondary, and tertiary legendary effects are, rolling the three ones exactly perfectly. I mean, eventually, of course, I'll do it, but I'm not going to sit here for hours re-rolling a fixer to get what I want. So please keep that in mind. If I get something that's requested a two-star variant or, you know, close enough, I will do it. It'll add a little bit more variety, I suppose. But anyways, we're going to start this off with a Juggernaut's prefix weapon. What this one does is gives you plus 25% additive bonus damage when you are at over 95% health. So we'll be spamming stim packs and such, and we'll be doing that. Got a prime receiver because I can craft these babies for free. I don't have unlimited ammo, so we can uh, check out our ammo consumption. And what I'll be doing possibly for... Uh, videos going forward is making sure these weapons aren't going to be invincible so we can still examine weapons by their uh, condition bar and their deterioration because I think that is something we should still uh, think about in the viability of a weapon because if it breaks halfway during Scorched Earth or a Colossal Problem then you're gonna have issues. We've got an aligned stock, an aligned long barrel for VATS usage, a reflex for the same thing. Quick magazine, probably swap that out for an armor piercing magazine. And a suppressor for sneaky stealth commando business. Now, let's chuck on some perks. The game, if you're wondering at this moment, isn't actually that much different to what they've got already. We've just got the world's function, so I'm going to utilize it instead of waiting. I I'm impatient, alright? So, we've got 104. And you can tell what that uh, junkies, junkies, sorry, it's a J word. Uh, Juggernaut's bonus gives me. It's I think it's plus twenty five percent additive, and uh, funnily enough, adrenal reaction gives you one hundred and fifty or so. It used to give you one hundred and fifty. Maybe it's not that much these days, but um, you could probably do more damage with this thing at low health. You know, if you've got the right build, then you would do with high health. Also, here's another thing about having all of my things free to make. Mmm. No more negative mutations for me. Look at all that strength, baby. That's, like, two more than usual. Alright, so, that's things perked up. Gonna grab some chameleon armor, swap the magazine, and we'll get to go. Okay, so if you recall, I got 104 health at full health. Now I've just gone down under Nerd Rage Threshold. I don't have that perk applied, but just with Adrenal Reaction alone, I'm getting slightly more damage. Now, obviously, yeah, I am getting slightly more damage this way, and if I chucked on Nerd Rage, I'd get more, but I don't think this really justifies um, having it. If Obviously, if you're going for a low health approach, you're going to go for a bloodied, so... Um, I guess you could potentially say that these are useful for doing daily ops where low health builds can't really hack it. Especially when there's uh, the resilient things and you've got a 2 endurance commando or 2 endurance uh, gunslinger. The rest of them can do fine, but those two really, really struggle, at least for me. But I don't think this is enough damage to justify running these things at low health, even though you'd still technically get all of the uh, unyielding bonuses, which I do not have. I actually don't have applied now, but, you know, we could have a lot better stats right now, but I'm going to run this full health, so we'll have a couple of right-aways, and then we'll head inside and shoot mutants. Alright, so there's been a change in my perk cards. I've got first aid instead of nerd rage, because I'm not going to use nerd rage, and if I'm healing a little bit more um, from my stim packs, that probably means I won't need as much of them to go around. Now, I'm getting no VATS bonuses, so I may as well not use VATS, except for the agility thing, that's kind of helpful, but that's also good for sneaking and the derived uh, uh, stats from that sneaking, obviously, and then a little bit more AP. Helps me sprint around a little bit. 
it's all very good stuff. Now, fixes with fire rate are always going to be good, and, you know, having this extra bonus at full health means basically the game is going to be on easy mode. For a stealth build like this, it lends itself very well to, um very low health or high health depending on what your weapon prefix is because well you're not going to get hit most of the time and even if you do happen to get detected you can slip right back out the suppressor will basically take care of you the big big sausage burrito on the end of the barrel it stops the explosion from sounding so wide but if you actually like stare at a dark wall you get seizures from the muzzle flashes that shouldn't be there like that so we're kind of crushing it right now. Um, I haven't had to use a stim pack yet, and I don't need to look at whatever dropped here because none of what happens in these worlds are a, a, a cannon. I guess they're not cannon. We'll come back for that one. We've got the follow through bonus. I don't think we'll hit him for another 10 seconds, but that's a, probably another thing I should mention. Follow through. Yeah, it's good. Whoops. Got ourselves hit there. A little bit of panic fire. That's okay. We'll grab a stim pack, even when in a combat just then. Hey, it's a quad minigun. I'm going to pick it up because I can. Just one star. Now I really shouldn't have done that. Can't bloody see. There we go. Now it's away. And that didn't hit us. That's good. If you want to you know, have a small chance of just resisting whatever bullets come at your way, you can grab uh, Ricochet, which I have here, just to uh, make sure that that... that doesn't happen. That may have been what happened, but I didn't see it show. Legendary perks. Here they are, by the way. Also, I can... I've got a bunch of these extra perk points. I don't know why they've given me that, but I could further optimize this build. You know what? I don't think we need to. I think we're okay. This is the Brotherhood Civvies outfit it's from Steel Dawn. I meant Steel Rain. Alright, so I'm thinking with the power that I have with this weapon, this entire video should be a milk run, which is good. Talk about the PTS. It's pretty good at the moment. We've got custom worlds. It sucks that console players don't get to experience this, because I'm guessing there'd be a lot of people in my subscriber base who would want to mess around with stuff. I definitely did. It's good. It's good fun. Um, it's actually kind of cool. It's a shame that none of your XP or anything, you know, gets carried over, but I guess for balancing reasons, you don't want a bunch of god roll fixes being, you know, introduced into everything, but, you know, if you're going for, you know, if you want to borrow a weapon of a friend just for a survey, you just drop it for you, no strings attached, they could re-import their characters and you can use it at the same time. It goes for all kind of gear. Um, hopefully there won't be any exploits to... Uh, make the stuff transfer over because then we'll have massive RMT shit going on and there's already enough of that already. Also, we're hitting these guys for 223, which is like a little baby 556 five, size bullet. We got detected for a second then, but unfortunately, the ghouls still have no idea. We're on the cusp of being detected here. Really no issues. I feel like this fix is not kicking as much as I'm used to. Maybe I'm used to 10 mil sub recoil patterns no that's normal all right just maybe when i'm hip firing it's not as bad but yeah clean up here no issues um i'd almost say this is too easy but i'd be doing like better if i was low health but i'm there's no real risk here and that's kind of the thing it's like low risk low reward so in terms of balance it's it's great but you're gonna get better damage out of stuff like aristocrats which you know it's not terribly dangerous having 30,000 caps in your inventory, so that's kind of... Shut up, Twitter. And so it's just kind of sitting there as... I don't want to call it a nothing prefix because it's okay, but I mean, it's only 1% better than the Gormons, but maybe it's because I'm using it on a fixer with fire rate with a suppressor. It's making it seem really good, but I mean, what weapon is... What fixer isn't good with this sort of, sort of setup and secondary legendary effect? We'll move on. Alright, mod stealth commando nonsense featuring Swan in a few seconds. Uh, we'll keep going. These guys shouldn't be a problem. So, I'm thinking that Juggernauts is in a good spot. Um, maybe a synergy you could think of, that I could think of, would be to have, like, everyone using Juggernauts. And maybe if it's, like, a... 
I mean, for a suppressed sort of loadout, that's great. And, and not a lot of squads can coordinate stealth unless they're really sweaty and are good at the game. But most of the time, you've got a heavy gun or a bit of build diversity here. And if you have got a heavy gun, you're going to get shot at. So I'm thinking maybe Team Medic can use, like, their Medic's guns, right? Just to crit spam and heal them so they don't have to go through all of their stim packs. That might be cool. Or use those, uh, st the stim pack perks, which allow you to apply stim packs to everyone around you. So, you know, you can potentially have a bit of synergies here, but for the current moment, there just seems to be nothing that would warrant that thing. Maybe if you had this sort of setup in PvP, but then most PvP servers will probably have VATs turned off anyway, because it's auto aim cheap garbage, that's why it wasn't in Nuclear Winter. So, I don't know, it's kind of in a weird spot where it's useful, sure, but there's like... A billion options that are better, you know? Let's keep on going. These crabs aren't gonna kill themselves, and if they would, then that's horrible for their mental health. We gotta clear them out, though. Fix is gonna do pretty well. I'm not really having too much issues with latency. I guess it's because I'm not streaming right now, and that's, like, allowing more of the internet to flow through into the server in foreign land than it would be otherwise. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. So, we've basically gone this entire video without taking any knocks at all, so, you know, no scars on Winter's body, so, you know, bikini bodies are still a thing. Uh, I should probably get a grenade out. The Mylurk Queen here might prove a little bit of a threat. Uh, let's go for the legs. It's the wrong side. Oh. We one-magged it. Well. Fair enough. That's good. Good, good job, Juggernaut's Fixer. Um, even if, actually, that was far less dire than what it would be, because it may have hit me a few times, but it wouldn't have killed me straight up, and it would have popped this stim pack straight away. So, it's a very, sort of, easy playstyle, I guess. If you're worried about dying all the time, then Juggernaut's is great, because it encourages you to, encourages you to stay at a health level that is uh, not 20% like the rest of us mad bastards. To get a better read on what Juggernauts can do, I need to try it on something that I can't use with stealth. Um, probably rule melee out as well, because all of the low health things like strength boost your damage a lot. Something like a heavy gunner of some description with Juggernauts would be interesting to me, because obviously you're not going to have the ability to always sneak all the time unless you're using a flamer, but that's kind of silly. Ah, look, there's a bat spawning out of nowhere. That was a total Battlefield squad spawn right there. I had to not shoot him, otherwise he'd get spawn protection. Alright, so you're coming down. Your radiation is very threatening, so I want to make sure that you aren't going to be spraying me down with that. We are using prime receivers, just as a reminder. Um, so that's a thing we can do to utilize this to get slightly better damage. I'm actually surprised that we killed that thing while so it was still airborne. Maybe Vats just doesn't like targeting it when it's going through its landing animation. That's not good. Uh, I think we're still over 95. If he does that again, we'll have to pop a stim pack, probably. And these, uh, the radiation that they're giving, that can, you know, gate me health to below 95. So we've got to keep a watch of that. In fact, I'm going to really be pedantic about this. Okay, that didn't do anything. Um, if you had one of those mods, I don't condone having mods to show you exactly what, um exactly what health you're on. I don't think there's anything percentage-based, but there's things that segment your health bar a little bit. Maybe you could have like a 95% cap-tuned version of that. That might make it easier. Uh, the Scorched, uh, just eating the bullets, that's normal in live servers. It's just a little bit of a bug. Can't blame the server on that. Now, what I'm going to do is a Rad Shield, and I'll try to pull one out of here. I'm in danger from something. Oh yeah, we're good to go. Uh, let's mag dump this thing in the face. See ya. You can see there, I was getting 700 damage um, when uh, follow through got all set up, which is good news. Good stuff. Follow through is massive. And there we go. There's a little bit of damage shrugged off. And again, oh, it's a shotgun. That's why. He's shooting like eight projectiles at once. And now I'm in danger. All right. Let's just add a little bit of Vats cheese at the end of this video because I've kind of been neglecting it a little bit. We've got AP regen on all of my armor bits, so 
we could we could have gotten away with using it. We could have used dodgy as well, but I opted to go for the uh, damage perks here just to maximize what we could do. But potentially, if you were to not use a suppressor, using those uh, taking less damage perks, very useful for this thing because that means you require less healing to heal, less impacts to go through. The more combat you will be able to go without going to craft them. So they have it. Uh, Juggernaut's Fire Rate Fixer. I think the Fire Rate Fixer part of that did most of the work here. The Juggernaut's was just a little bit of a cherry on the top. Not really much I can talk about it there. But the weapon was fun to use and a different playstyle, I guess, with a high health thing and popping a stim pack whenever I feel the slightest bit of damage. It's a little bit different for me. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And also, be sure to let your requests be down there. Put them down. Give me interesting stuff, maybe. It'd be cool.